Slightly unusual performance because uh, of this hellish sort of uh, cough. Uh, it's not that it affects my voice, you know, because uh, I think it's possible, you know. But I've had to give up smoking and I'm a nervous wreck. <laughs> you find me forgetting things and twitching, which tends to put some folk off. Uh, start off with a hymn. <laughs> Change my ways, okay. <laughs> Ever since I had this illness <laughs> on Saturday, you know, I've taken this to heart. Wow. Uh -huh. 
I'm unbiased. <laughs> <coughs> I'll do a simple type song. Let's see. Sing something simple. <laughs> 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 Now, because the chorus out every <laughs> stealing from Alex Campbell, <laughs> they got no shape. Uh, this is the, the power cut song, which also you know, I've been sort of flogging to death for the past six months. Uh, for those of you who haven't heard it, you know, so many sort of strangers here, it's about the American power cut when they had no electricity or light <laughs> and uh, <laughs> uh, simple pleasures. And the birth rate went up by 70%. The thing is, you got this uh, sequel. Uh, about a month ago, you had this flood in Venice. Uh, uh, well, no, you didn't. It was some time ago. But you had a report about a flood in Venice last year. And uh, none of the people could get to the boozers and other young lads for weeks on end. And it seems the birth rate went up by over 100% in Venice. And this sort of bears out what I've been saying, you know, whiskey is the best contraceptive in the world, you know. <laughs> and, uh, you know, always near time bombing the Chinese, you want to drop whiskey on them. <laughs> yeah, still, you know, sort the buggers out. You know? yeah. Also, Barbara Castle doesn't know what she's doing, you know. Her mind boggles. <laughs> Breathalyzer, you know, but the only government measure to increase productivity has been that. <laughs> <laughs> increase the family allowance. And uh, the breathalyzer. <laughs> Praise to my favourite recent topical news story about Barbara Castle falling off the pier at Scarborough, being rescued by George Brown, who gave her the kiss of light. She turned green. <laughs> It's <laughs> moved up here already. Tonight, the oh, news travels fast. Look at this chorus. Come, people, pay attention and listen to my song. There's only 90 verses. I'll not detain you long. Now, Uncle Sammy blew a fuse, which caused the lights to fail. And plunge the nation into gloom. Come listen to my tale. From Alaska down to Panama, from Hawaii to New York. Ten people out of nine agree it's better in the dark. John Citizen came home from work like any other night. And his house in semi-darkness, his wife born in a fright. John, John, the power's gone, the TV's up the spout. But John just pulled his trousers down and blew the candle out. <laughs> from Alaska down to Panama, from Hawaii to New York. Ten people out of nine agree it's better in the dark. When things go wrong, this proves to all the world it's proof I wanted. That kind of earth to type. Undaunted, as they lay there struggling and breathless. 
us on the floor. She murmured, John, no, come, we never thought of this before. From Alaska down to Panama, from Hawaii to New York, ten people out of nine agree it's better in the dark. Nine in a half. But nine long months of Boston gone and there's a bill to pay. Dr. Kildare and all his men are working night and day. Love, they say, is a costly game and must be properly planned. But a pack of the three is hard to see when darkness rules the land. From Alaska down to Panama, from Hawaii to New York. A longer duck of her cuts, he wants them every night. He won't go off to war, he's a better plan instead. For out of darkness comes the light, he'd rather go back to bed. From Alaska down to Panama, from Hawaii to New York. Me, they're going about it the right way. <laughs> uh, this is a, an Irish song which is a bit unusual because it's. You had the uh, eight Irish rebels who were captured and shot in a castle, you know, one of these sort of incidents you had periodically for the past few hundreds of years. And uh, when anything like this happened, you had all the sort of patriotic songwriters. Uh, delved into the incident and immediately composed songs and you get dozens of songs about ranging from brilliant songs to a load of uh, what's it about any particular incident and this particular shooting at a castle called Drumbo not Drumbo, Drumbo uh, puzzled them because the Irish rebels had been captured by fellow Irishmen you know the usual formula was to blame the bloody Saxon uh, but in this case the the Irishmen were captured, you know, by Irish, uh, jailed by Irish. Uh, the judge was Irish, the jury was all Irish. They were sent to um, a prison where the governor was Irish. The firing squad was Irish. And uh, as hard as they could look, they couldn't find a Saxon in sight, you know. <laughs> so I wrote this song called The Castle of Drumbo. Shrieking round the castle of Rambo. While patriot blood is flowing red in the sod and soil below.
you cringe to Orange Castle, you've knelt to English Jones, even borrowed England's armory, your country to overthrow. Fighting men in the castle of <coughs> the midnight high, a shrieking around the castle of <coughs> Rumble. <coughs> Actually, there's about four or five changes of tempo, and I've tried singing that in three, four time, two, four time, four, four time. And tonight we just, Archie and myself, decided to compromise on three, four time. And I nearly <coughs> made it. <laughs> now I'll do this. After insulting a judge. Who knows what would have happened? You might have gone on television, Mr. <laughs> 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 I'm working at it. 
was my auntie Paula's song. Um, which, you know, once again is a protest against the breathalyzer. When, uh, I'm not driving. Oh, Tara. When we get home rule, we're going to sort of arrest any pedestrian who's on the streets after 11 sober. <laughs> so confusing now, just saying, you know, can I tell the polis from ragmen, you know, <laughs> I've got balloons. <laughs> <laughs> this is a, the anti polis song, which, for those of you who learned it, you know, can join it. It was doing in old Invertotti, the Gestapo were out on their beat. Looking for murder and arson And drunks as they'd stood down the street No two of the chief constables agents Had notebooks quite full of names Forty men, three women and a dog But being up close as a <laughs> Still punishable by death, you know <laughs> Stop hanging, they kick you to death. <laughs> they, it was twelve o'clock when they found it. Lying there just like a log was a badly bashed about body. Tire marks scorched up its fizzle. <laughs> I wrote that line myself. <laughs> The hot price Tom Baxter did. <laughs> they went through the usual procedure. Kicked it to make sure it was dead. <laughs> then they went through its pockets and shared out its cash. And smoked all its fags while it bled. <laughs> then they lifted up this body. One at its head and its feet. Carried it up to an alleyway And dumped it on another man's beat <laughs> Final verse It was four o'clock when they refound it I wrote that line as well <laughs> Propped up in an old chip shop door It was naked by now We had no room its neck not wanted on beats three or four. <laughs> yeah, it's like the story of the two polis. One said the other one, could you lend us ten fags till the shop shut? <laughs> Like 
the Tories never could do. Recently, I had George Wig, you know, moving into a new job. And he hasn't told anybody what his old job was, which was secret. I know what it was, you know. The thing is that he was told which way the government were going to move. And he used to start a flood of snide stories and jokes. And if it was going to be a seller to Rhodesia, you'd have racist jokes like, what black and cleans Wendy's Shammy Davis Jr. and you know, all these, or uh, whatever, yeah, you know. Or if it's going to be a move away from the common market, the Audi Grisa, a Volkswagen, you run over an Italian, you know, and, and so on, you know. And, uh, but, you know, you had them coming in series, you know. A hard line with the East would be, how do you break a Russian's finger? Punch him in the nose, you know? <laughs> and so on, you know. They came in waves. You saw who to hate, you know. They even had what's yellow and says cheap, cheap of Chinese hood. You know? <laughs> Went through all the races. You could see what the government was going to do. You could predict, you know. jokes have been going out recently. This is it, you know. Gonna get kicked out of the common market. Gonna form a sort of Central African Federation with Ian Smith. <laughs> See it coming. The master race in Africa gave me a kick in the eye. They didn't agree with democracy, declared their UDI. They sat on me and spat on me and challenged me out to fight. It's had assorted them for sure if the bastards hadn't been white. I'm the boy to please them, I'm the boy to squeeze them. Silver tongue will please them, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll tie their arms, I'll tie their legs, I'll tie their tongues up too. And I'll kick them in the teeth like the Tories never could do. Last verse, a bit of nostalgia. I always think of back to the days when the trade unions were working for the people who paid them. Because most of the officials were sort of people who'd worked at one time or another. I know Oxford graduates and geniuses like they're using now. <laughs> we're all scrabbling about for knighthoods. <laughs> you know, yeah, the, the unofficial motto of the Scottish Trade Union Congress used to be uh, non illegitimi carborundum. Which, as you all know, means don't let that bastard grind you down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But now they've got that Latin right, you know. Some working men in Birmingham began to kick up a noise. So I enlisted the help of the big trade union boys. They soon came out in favor of my economic squeeze. Couple of knighthoods and a dozen OBEs. I'm the boy to freeze them, I'm the boy to squeeze them. Silver tongue will please them, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll tie their arms, I'll tie their legs, I'll tie their tongues up too. Then I'll kick them in the teeth like the Tories never could do. <laughs> I'm trying to think of an anti boo song now that the. Well, the bloody bar's shut, for God's sake, you know. <laughs> You're as well making the best of it. Uh, why not, you know? So, that's sort of bloody pop, you know. <coughs> Cough mixture. <coughs> <coughs> Nobody believes this cough is genuine, you know. <coughs> <coughs> it is, yeah. 
I'm going to start with this song in any case, you know, this is a... Uh... Well, I've introduced it for years as my favourite song, and it still is my favourite song. But very recently I discovered that I was labouring under a misapprehension. Um, oh, that's political again. It's a song called Campbell, which... Um, um, I learned of a record of a man called Pink Anderson <coughs> and I sang for many many years you know and the, the fact was it's a record that's got sort of snide anti-racist bits in it and the fact that Pink Anderson was an albino negro <laughs> uh, struck me as really whimsical <laughs> and it became a favorite song of mine <coughs> Also, my favorite guitarist of all time, and the one I've copied more than anyone else, he said, this is a true confessions bit, is a man called Blind Blake. <coughs> and, uh, what, last week, <coughs> I was able to buy uh, another record of Blind Blake. He made, I think, about 87 records. And he can get repressings of them under pirates, and things like that, you know. And I keep trying to acquire them. And I bought this record um, last week. And it had seven tracks of him, sort of blurred. And four of them I'd heard before. But this song was one of them. And I find that Blind Blake also wrote this. <laughs> and this is Campbell. And uh, this made me think, you know, about British rule. Because all the militant Negroes in the United States seem to come from the West Indies, you know. And Blind Blake was one of them. He's from Bermuda. Apart from being the best blues guitarist who ever lived, uh, and that includes a few of the Baroque uh, people who are hanging about at present. Uh, he was definitely a sort of militant because uh, he was what 1927 when he was doing verses about colored men voting it's a very courageous thing to say <laughs> in those days ah, it's a very courageous thing to say a couple of years ago a song called campbell chorus i had an old friend named campbell campbell used to steal and gamble is a living cheating all the while now we had a little game called yoga black jack and dice and poker he thought he was the smartest dude in town but i found out on monday campbell got locked up sunday they got him in the jailhouse down in town. They got Campbell in that jail. Ain't got no one to go his bail. That judge he won't accept no fine. He's in the jail. Once or twice, stop playing at them cards and dice. He's in that jail house now. Now that's the chorus. That's also to reassure you. Uh, not one of you could do it worse than me. <laughs> Volume's more important than quality. <laughs> Doesn't matter if you're tone deaf, just select your own key and belt it out. <laughs>
never be lost. Walk from New York to Boston just to raise some colored sentiment. Now my brother builds a boulder, builds a great promoter. He's always looking for some good advice. So they paid Bill to go to the poll and vote for the boat man and so instead of voting once he voted twice but they got him town last Friday I met a girl they call Lydy Ooh, she was the prettiest gal in town she began to call me honey I began to spend my money we went into a cafe and sat down I made sure I was in it I was drinking every minute I was drinking whiskey and wine By the quart But when I went to pay that man I found that lady's hand Right in my pocket Where to his face that woman's hand was out of its place she's in that grave yeah now <laughs> um, I'll tell you an unusual story about the Hamilton by-election about Jim McLean, uh, who's a sort of Paisley maniac, <laughs> who wrote some songs. And um, Nigel Denver, who's a Glasgow nit. <laughs> <laughs> this is me doing the sort of introductions for everyone, who made a record of Jim McLean's songs. Um, and there's this poster. And they were all anti-royalty songs. Songs like N.A.B. for royalty and other colorless common abuse songs. And uh, Jim McLean went up to uh, Winifred Atwell. <laughs> no, what's her name? Ewing. Ewing, yeah. To, uh, and in, in the, the party headquarters, there's a portrait of the queen on the wall. <laughs> And I said, with the darts in it. I said, no, no, uh, glass. And there's sort of glass round about it. And they reckon that, uh, oh, they're, they're leaving this image behind them now, you know. And they want to join the Commonwealth uh, and be faithful to the Queen. And they want to be independent in the com Commonwealth. <laughs> <laughs> you know. uh, the shades of Wilson, you know. But anyway, and I live what? I live less than a mile from Hamilton. 
And I've sung for, I don't know how many Scottish Nationalist concerts. And it was never even hinted that I'd sort of lend my services. <laughs> I don't know any singer that was asked. No, I know of a few. Uh, the thing is that everybody is being pragmatic. And this is the thing, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a sort of pragmatic pacifist. This is true, you know. Because it's dead easy to turn the other cheek if somebody's going to slap you. It's not as easy as, you know, if they're going to stick a banner up your ass. <laughs> Ah, <laughs> this is, this is ah, a pragmatic pacifist, you know. This is a, which means I'm not a pacifist at all, you know. And uh, Wilson's a pragmatic socialist. <laughs> In the same sense. <coughs> and, uh, oh, I don't know about Winifred Atwell. Sure, we'll all be happy in the Commonwealth. <laughs> well, eventually, she'll join the Liberals. <coughs> I'll do this song. Ah, no, I'll do this one. Oh, Scott. Oh. 
I'll do a song which I haven't sung in Scotland for a while. It sung at great effect in Middlesbrough recently. <laughs> 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 Song. Now somebody writes a sort of Dundee football song. Mind yeah, I wouldn't mind writing an anti Ansel song, you know, coming from Motherwell myself. You know? <laughs> <laughs> well you've heard all oh, the Phillies and Sally's. Norman Conks and the Santoy It's two more to add to your tally The Terry and Cumberland boy Now the Derry boys are devout Christians That's plain both to hear and to see Their language is really religious Jesus Christ, oh my God, MTD. <laughs> now the Cumby boys are Roman Catholic. They chapel they've been once or twice. But Parkhead is their new Jerusalem. And Jogstein, the latter day Christ. What they think of oh, religion They'll say our religion's all right But these blokes are only religious When they want an excuse for a fight So don't wear a green scarf in Brighton Or a blue scarf in Cumberland Street Unless you're a heavyweight champion Or a hell of a quick on your feet <laughs> Anyway, you know, I'm thinking it's just as well it wasn't the Rangers, you know because the English would have sent a gunboat up the river plate. <laughs> Caused a hell of a lot of trouble for every bugger. <laughs> uh, thanks. I'll ask this uh, the early morning blues. I'll do that. It's a blind Blake again. I can't give him enough advertising. Unfortunately, he doesn't do him any good. He's been buried. I, I, uh, he's been dead long. And he hasn't got any sort of obvious relatives. It's the thing, you know, blues singers and peasantry don't establish dynasties. They've got to fend for themselves. into a week. <laughs> <laughs> 
I told you I was going to tap dance before I'm finished. <laughs> Got my belly button inlaid with emeralds. <laughs> Same with that for the end. <laughs> Surprises, that's me. Yeah, PJ Proby who splits us on the knickers, you know. <laughs> See, guess they're specially made, you know. I search for trousers that won't split. <laughs> you get these buggers and <laughs> Said, you know, there's no fair. I miss that string <laughs> early this morning. My baby made me so Yes, early this morning My baby made me so Well, I'm gonna wait and leave you Ain't coming back And I'll do an unaccompanied ballad. That's it. Ah, I feel the moon. Thanks. Unaccompanied ballad. Soldier Soldier Oh, oh, oh. Uh, yeah, well, it depends how long it takes to put a first string on. <laughs> well, give, give the first string and I'll put it on, and that's it. No, the thing is, I'll do, I'll do some of my children's songs, things like... <laughs> <laughs> there was a wee woman come walking down the stairs. She caught ten years. Now give us a new one. <laughs> there was a wee woman come walking down the stairs. She cost him his britches too. 
Oh. <laughs> you'll know shite there. Ah, oh, but I will shite here. No, but you'll know shite there. Ah, oh, but I will. No, but you'll know. Ah, oh, but I have. <laughs> collected at Halloween recently, you know, <laughs> recently, you know, some years ago. Oh, Chris, uh, uh, Chris, oh, the wee white knob. <laughs> That's me becoming racist again. I wouldn't even mind a blind one, you know. <laughs> 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 uh, I'll tell you, I'll do this Irish song with a chorus to hope you'll join in because this is sort of anti war type song. Well, there's been numerous anti war songs, you know. You've got umpteen sort of official folk songs like Brave Wolf, songs about Napoleon. And uh, they've gained some popularity, but I think basically, you know, most of the sort of these were sort of art songs, sort of Max Jaffa songs, <laughs> oh, oh. Um, that were written by 18th century Ewan McCall's. <laughs> that are now, and they're very clever. You know, Brave Wolf has got a, a beautiful tune, and most of these sort of Napoleonic songs and heroic songs about Napoleon are uh, beautifully written and they've got very, very nice tunes. This is what makes me think that they're written by people who are sort of clever and uh, making money at it. Uh, <laughs> uh, and you know, you can class them along with Rule Britannia and uh, some of the other popular songs. The only genuine sort of uh, war songs I've heard, which I would class sort of folk songs, which I've heard sung by the folk, are generally derisive. Uh, you've got the ones where they lose their arms and their legs. And then you've got the impolite ones where they lose other parts of their anatomy. <laughs> <laughs> but generally, you know, I mean, you've, well, in England, you've got things like, I don't want to be a soldier, I don't want to be a man of war, I'd rather hang around Piccadilly underground, living off the earnings of some high-class lady. I don't want to bullet up me backside, I don't want to be like a shot away, I'd rather hang around Piccadilly underground, and so on, you know. Um, <laughs> Well, but uh, I'm going to do an unaccompanied song. This is, in the old days before television came in, the happy hunting grounds for the, well, you know, you had two methods of uh, advertising. This is water, incidentally. Um, you had two methods of sort of recruiting. You couldn't tell people what a grand life it was in the army. And about the, the great weather at Aden. <laughs> and this is it, you know. So they had two methods, you know, you had the soft cell where you got them paralytic and dragged them off. <laughs> and you had the hard cell where you beat them over the head and drag them off. <laughs> and uh, but you know the thing is even then they were merciful and they preferred the soft cell. So the happy hunting ground was uh, Scotland and Ireland, where the natives were easily led to drink. <laughs> and you got all these Scottish and Irish ballads, which I call hangover ballads, which were written the morning after, when they'd signed on for 30 years. <laughs> and were sort of anticipating parts of their anatomy being, um, what's it? <laughs> now this is an Irish one, where the guy's reminiscing. And he'd been lucky, because he'd only lost his eyes and his legs. <laughs> <laughs> About four years ago, I was digging the land. 
With me brogues on me feet and me spade in me hand Says I to myself, what a pity to see Such a fine strapping lad footin' turf in Tralee With me tourin' and ya With me tourin' and ya With me tourin' and yourin' and yourin' and ya but apart from my friends and relatives, you know, <laughs> that's a dead easy chorus. Come on. It doesn't matter if you haven't got an Irish accent. If you're anti war, just go rhubarb. <laughs> <laughs> so I butted me brogues and shook hands with me spade. I went off to the war like a dashing young blade. I met with a sergeant to ask me to list. Or a sergeant, a gara, stuck the bob in me fist with me tooren and ya. With me tooren and ya. With me tooren and yourin and yourin and ya. Well, the first thing they gave me, it was a red coat. And a white strap of leather to tie round me throat. Then they gave me a queer thing, I asked, what was that? And they told me it was a cockade for me hat With me tourin' and ya With me tourin' and ya With me tourin' and yourin' and yourin' and ya And the next thing they gave me, they called it a gun with powder and shot and a place for me thumb. Well, first she spat fire and then she spat smoke. She gave a great leap and me shoulder and you broke with me to and ya. With me to and ya. With me to And the first place they sent me was down to the sea On board of a warship bound for the Crimea Three sticks in the middle all rolled round with sheet Faith she walked through the water without any feet With me to Renania With me to Renania With me to When at Balaclava we landed quite sound All cold, wet and hungry we lay on the ground Next morning for action the bugle did call And we got a hot breakfast of powder and ball With me to Renania With me to Renania With me to Well, we forked at the Alma like a wise anchor man. But the Russians, they wailed us at the Redan. While scaling the walls there, myself lost an eye. And a big Russian bullet ran off with me thigh. With me to Renania. With me to Renania. With me to It was there I lay bleeding all on the cold ground Heads, legs and arms lay scattered all round Says I, if me mam and me clavines were nigh They'd bury me decent and raise a loud cry With me to Renania With me to Renania with me to run and you run and you run and ya. But they called a doctor who soon staunched me blood. And he gave me an elegant leg made of wood. 
They gave me a medal and ten pence a day. So contented with Sheila, I live on half pay. With me to Renya. With me to Renya. With me to Sarah, do, uh, Sarah, do this song so well, you know. Good song to leave by. Uh, so, you know, mood music. Songs to piss off to. <laughs> to do, you know, sort of Harry Mary, the right. sinful saga of the seduction and downfall of Harry Mary. <laughs> Thing is, you got a sequel now, which, uh, no, no, you, you got this, uh, well, you know, you had, the, the original song was, I'm no Harry Mary, I'm your no, and uh, then you got the sinful saga of the seduction and downfall of Harry Mary, and you got a song now, which I, Unfortunately, I haven't he cleaned up enough to sing to. <laughs> well, well, you know, how's it going? Um, well, the first verse, you know, of course, cleaned up slightly. Uh, <laughs> 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 it, um, you might recognize the tune, it's not a parody, you know. This is, uh, you know, in Glasgow at present, you've got this fantastic <coughs> fashion for parody. Uh, things like. Um, you made me love you, you woke me up to do it, you know. <laughs> um, I've got the son in the morning and the father at night, you know. <laughs> and um, come to me, my alcoholic baby. Every baby loves my body and all these. And um, I think that I'm... In a neat little city called Glasgow, to the dance and I was bound. It was there I met Harry Mary, who flogs it for half a crown. <laughs> oh, her eyes were covered with mascara. She was black queen of Barrelan. And her baubles hung over her shoulders, held up by her big darkie's hand. <laughs> called a black velvet gland. <laughs> um, it's part of a long series like Alexander's ragtime gland. And <laughs> gland of hope and glory. <laughs> you got a duet for fairies called uh, This Gland is My Gland. <laughs> and glance on it. <laughs> on forever. And, uh, you know, I sort of wonder who invents all these dirty jokes. <laughs> no, uh, you know, I'm driving on the car. You, it's only recently I've started inventing some of them. <laughs> um, you hear one, you know, sort of, maybe it's sort of a weird train of thought, you know. Yeah. The whole series like that. The glandular ones, you know, that all came from this Chinese, you know, it had this haiku, 17 syllables sort of bit. And um, he got this Chinese poem that went uh, hand in hand, uh, uh, gland in hand, <laughs> gland in gland, gland. <laughs> <laughs> we started that, you know. And you have a whole other series that started with, you know. Sort of, well, you can sort of continue from the frustrated movie producer, uh, J. Arthur Wank. That's <laughs> 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 something to start from. Um, after that, 
I'm not gonna do Harry Mary. Oh, well, okay, I will do Harry Mary. You can all shout rhubarb and Bezikhov and. Uh, <laughs> She says something twatish like, no, it's just the way I'm stoning, you know. You know, you could say something brilliant like, oh, we ain't gonna stop. <laughs> this was written by, well, I'd like to say it was written by a pair of fairies, but I can't eat. <laughs> Launches into the funny. Oh, Mary. Can I run you in? Oh, oh, I've got a pair of sand shoes. <laughs> you hell of a funny. Got the royal and the orange juice. She's having it all her own bloody way. <laughs> yeah, a real drunken child, you know. Finally knocks it off. <laughs> Tables is turned. Come down through the back clothes and into the tunny. Oh, oh it wasn't it for the first time. <laughs> Glory, hallelujah. Cut him an oil and the orange juice. Who came her mammy? She was gone to the clodgy. A bucket of sharpish <laughs> Glory, hallelujah Hot for oil and the orange juice Just run out of funny lines 
Mary, Mary, looking for her heart, man. Oh, oh, he's joined the foreign legion. <laughs> Sarah and her cameos, one of the royal and the orange juice. Then Harry, Mary had a little baby. Oh, oh, with feathers in the army. <laughs> Tom, you're my. 